little goats, how are you doing? Hope you're doing pretty well. Uh, right now the moon is at 61.6% .6 illumination in the sign of Sagittarius, very fiery energy. Sagittarius are also like seekers of truth and I feel that with the full moon in Libra that we just had on the 24th, there's a lot of that, right? There's a lot of like truth and karmic justice, you know, kind of coming to light and taking place at this time. So let's see what is going on with you, what you can expect moving forward, and what messages there has for you. Dude, that is so fucking crazy. We have a cross watcher because this showed up in my last reading. Um, or wait, was it that card? Oh, you know what? It might have been another reptilian card actually. Come to think of it because the other one was about tyrannical, like whatever. But this is Alpha Draconians, right? Very reptilian. Um, so there's like a focus on corruption, um, unethical behaviors and cults. I don't feel that's you because you're also showing up as Syrians A, right? Which tells me that you're artistic, you have integrity, you're honest. Um, with, I mean, this could be in regards to like uh, spirituality, right? He's dressed like the Pope, but he's like a monster, right? He's a reptilian, he's cold-blooded, he has no real empathy. He's not really showing up for the people, you know? Um, this could also be like a boss. This could also be a focus on like political shit. Uh, we're gonna get to the bottom of it, but there's a focus though on this stuff and kind of like you're in a mindset of like, well, how do we fix it? How do we transmute it, right? Because you're, because uh, alchemy and the philosopher's stone also showed up. And this is about infinity, destiny, and magic. And so I feel that you feel a huge part of your calling is to kind of um, right some wrongs, right? Or like help um, maybe pull evil people out of power or bring things to light, transmute the energies that have been, you know, this feels a lot larger than you. And it feels like you're trying to transmute something that's so much bigger. This is like the ultimate philosopher's stone, if you will, with the uh, fire element showing up. This is a uh, warrior passion, fearlessness, and it's kind of like you're coming at it just full ass. You could be some sort of like activist or, um, I don't know, I just feel you being like a warrior for justice and truth, wanting to see good prevail. Uh, with the Alpha Centurions, there's uh, foresight, planning, and strategy, right? While every, all the other fish are going along with the flow, you're like, nope, I'm planning my next moves. I'm seeing what we can do here. Um, it's almost like you're realizing that this shit's a game, and you're like, yeah, well, that means that somebody gets to win, right? It means that if I learn about your tactics and the way that you're operating, that I can take you down that way, right? If we're thinking in terms of that, right? So I feel that you're really looking to um, get justice, maybe for many people, maybe for select people, but there's a big focus on that. And I know that this isn't in regards to relationships because Nagas is coming up too. And this is about lovers, eroticism, sensuality. sensuality. Um, this is a very healing connection, whether you're in this connection or you're about to be, right? Because, I mean, if you notice, they're like snakes intertwined, and that's the symbol of the Caduceus, right? And you'd see that symbol like on the Red Cross or uh, like EMT stuff, you know? And it's because that symbol universally means like healing, right? Specifically Kundalini healing, right? So there's, uh, if you're in a partnership, I see that this is very healing for you. It's very good for you. Or you could be going toward a partnership that is. So, let's see. I feel 
like you're just kind of fucked, fucking done with all the corruption, right? I almost said fucked and done. <laughs> you're fucked and done. <laughs> you're done with the corruption, right? And maybe that is it, right? You feel like fucked but systemically. And that's part of what's motivating you towards this because you're like, dude, this is fucking bullshit. Somebody's got to do something, and I'm a motherfucking Capricorn. That's what I'm feeling coming from you, right? Um, you know what I love about um, Capricorn is, you know, even though you're represented by the sea goat, when I see mountain goats, that's really what I think the most of when I think in terms of Capricorn, right? Like, those motherfuckers... They can like climb up the littlest, tiniest wedges and just, it's like they defy gravity. They can leap over crazy like jaunts, you know, like those fools aren't afraid of shit. They'll overcome any mountain, right? Um, they know how to be patient in times of um, like where predators are like you know trying to come at them and they'll patiently wait on the side of a fucking mountain until all threats are gone right they'll they'll buy their time and i feel that capricorn strongly resonate with that And, I, like, my north node is Capricorn, too, so, <laughs> so I feel a, a kindred spirit with you in a lot of ways, you know, with having to overcome these mountains and not feeling like anything is too fucking impossible for you, right? There's no height that is too high, there's no distance that is too far for you to overcome it and for you to do... Um, ain't no mountain high enough, sorry, <laughs> you know, it's like, there's just, you know, you're completely able to overcome whatever challenges you're facing, I have full faith in you, um, this is interesting, this is super interesting, we have the Knight of Cups in reverse, um, and the death card in reverse, right? Scorpio energy showing up heavy, right? Because that's Knight of Cups is water. Um, Scorpio is water, right? So seeing both of these in reverse, you could be dealing with a Scorpio. Um, with the Knight of Cups in reverse, I feel like a change of heart. Um, whether I'm going to clarify it to, to get deeper into that. Because I feel like... Yeah, you could be losing, like, passion or love for somebody or something. With the death in reverse, it's rebirth energy, right? It's like, but it could also represent that something hasn't quite been concluded. So, what is it that you're having a change of heart about, right? Because it looks like you were, you pursued it as something that you loved or something that you are good at, something that you felt uh, passionate about in some way. And it's like, I feel that you're kind of burnt out on it a little bit, on whatever it is. So what is it? I keep getting this uh, reassurance that it's not a relationship issue because with the five of pentacles in reverse, I feel that what it is that you're feeling like burnt out on and like a, a lackluster toward is um, it's like a job situation, right? But it's, it's almost like something pays too well or you're, you know, like financially there's a good payoff, you know, like... You have stability there. You know that, like, there's still something to be gained in that, but there's a lack of interest or passion toward it. Um, and the reason that I say that we keep getting, like, clarity that it's not a relationship thing is because the Queen of Cups is showing up with the Ten of Cups, right? Which tells me, like, right, the Queen of Cups is the Queen of Love, right? 
very like on top of her emotions very mature very wise very divine feminine energy kind of coming through and divine energy is fucking powerful right like if you've read any stories on any of the goddesses i feel that you would know um divine feminine energy is not one to take lightly right it's it's very fucking strong with the ten of cups i see emotional fulfillment in like and feeling content in your love life um so whether you're in this relationship or you're about to be it's like this is kind of the the relationship or the connection that is like a lifelong kind of thing right this is generational this is something that like you know you're probably going to meet up in the next life you may have kids if that's what you want you know or pets or whatever but there's like an aspect of building a family together and feeling uh home and comfort and being with each other right so i definitely feel that in terms of relationship that is looking good right that is looking solid as fuck your in regards to work in regards to people you have to answer to at work that's probably not going so well right you might have a shitty boss or you might have like um, or if you own a business, you could be dealing with issues in regards to, like, permitting or, you know, just, um, you know, other people kind of showing up as, like, sheep, or wolves in sheep's clothing, if you will, trying to take down what you're building for yourself. So, what is your, what is your advice? Six of Wands in reverse. This is like saying don't give them, don't give certain like individuals or you know whomever you're struggling with. It's like don't give them the attention that they're seeking, right? Or don't. Because um, it's like they want you to acknowledge certain things or they want certain kinds of attention or. They're trying to get something, some kind of reaction or response out of you, and it's kind of like saying your advice here is not to do that, right? Not to pay them so much mind, not to give so much of your energy to them, right? Not to let them fester in your brain, basically. With the strength in reverse, too, this is also kind of like... Why is that? And that's Leo energy, right? Six of Wands, Wands is fire. So heavy on the Leo energy here. Why is that in reverse? Okay, so the strength in reverse is clarified by the star card, Aquarius energy. Which is funny because um, Leo and Aquarius are on opposite ends of the zodiac uh, wheel. So they're equal opposites if you will they're polarities the strength in reverse is kind of like telling me that you're not going to have to go into like survival mode you're not gonna have to go into fight or flight mode and your advice here is with the star right the star card tells me that like because it's that hopefulness it's that silver lining that light at the end of the tunnel you know stars are the light in the darkness and it's kind of telling you like trust have faith in the process have faith that things are going to be turning around there's i don't feel like you yourself have to do anything right it's almost like let people fall on their own sword let shit just mm -hmm. kind of take its course because it's going to naturally and you're not going to have to show up. You're not going to have to puff your chest up. You know, you're not going to have to do all that. Um, it's kind of like saying, like, relinquish control over the situation in a lot of ways, right? Um, the less mind you pay it, the less power you give it.
Yeah, we have the Chariot in Reverse, Cancer Energy. This is telling me that, yeah, no movement is required from you at this time. It's kind of telling you to be still and to let something uh, work itself out, right? Let something resolve itself. It's almost like you will create some sort of resistance if you do try to, like, um, step in and do something, right? With the Three of Wands, this is calling you to be patient, wait for the ships to come in, wait for things to kind of, you know, settle down. With the Fool card, I do see that you will be taking a leap of faith, but a different kind, right? It's not going to be towards that. It's going to be in a different direction. It might be a little bit scarier because it's going to be outside of your comfort zone. Um, but it'll be ground zero in the next cycle of your life. What is it? The full card is Aries and Aquarius energy. And I believe you had... No, you have Aquarius energy on the board. I mean, there's a lot of signs out here, so, I mean, you could be dealing with people of any signs, you know, I'm just telling you the energies of the cards, these don't really necessarily have to be specific people from specific signs, if that makes sense. Alright, clarify the pool, please. Maybe this is a warning because it's kind of like saying if you jump the gun, if you take this leap of faith, if you do something foolish, right, um, I see that there will be like a negative outcome, right, with the wheel of fortune in reverse, so I feel like that that's more of a warning actually. Um, with the Two of Cups in reverse, this could negatively impact your relationship. This could create a divide, a separation. With the Three of Pentacles, it's like, yeah, it might be good for business, but it's like something else is, it's, it's like other areas of your life will suffer, right? If you take a certain leap of faith or if you take a certain action, so fully thinking it through it's kind of like telling you be patient bide your time let something resolve itself don't interfere in the natural process why what's going to happen in the natural process shouldn't um because with the ten of pentacles in reverse i see like an established um could be a business could be you know but it feels like somebody who is like very established in some sort of financial thing they're going to lose everything right with the ten of pentacles in reverse there's going to be great loss and you're not going to have to do shit to make that happen right somebody's going to fall on their own sword they're going to make their own business decision they're going to um, reap what they fucking sow. That's what's going to happen. And with the Nine of Swords in reverse, I feel that you're going to come out on top, right? You're going to come out um, unharmed by this, right? Because the Nine of Wands, or Nine of Swords is like being anxiety ridden, losing like sleep, feeling like, you know, like just overwhelmed and stressed out and it's kind of like saying don't even fucking stress yourself shit's gonna work itself out right ace of pentacles you're gonna be going on to a new venture 
They're going to take up a new opportunity. You're going to start a new cycle. With the world card, something's going to be closed out. A business could be closed down, right? Something is going to come to full completion, a full stop. Um, and with the Empress, Venus energy showing up, right? This goes hand in hand with that Queen of Cups. And it's kind of like saying, you're going to be the one on top here. You're going to be the one winning. You're going to be the one that uh, has the last laugh, if you will. Um, I feel that you're going to thrive through your creations, through your endeavors. You know, the Empress is all the queens in the upright. She is the epitome of divine feminine strength. Whether you're male, female, whatever, all masculine and feminine are in tarot is like the difference between like the left and right side of your brain, right? It's all about like, are you more artistic? Are you more spiritual? Are you more that? Or are you like more business minded, more structured, more, you know, like into leadership and those kinds of things, right? You're and so I feel that you're going to be tapping into your divine feminine, right? Where you don't have to do much. Because that's also um, the energy of the feminine. Like the, the masculine energy is the action, right? It's to do something, right? Whereas the feminine is to be something, right? To be means you don't have to do. So I feel that you're being called into stillness. You're being called to just be, right? To be your fullest, most authentic self. To um, focus on the things that, on the creativities and the skill sets that really bring you joy and happiness. All right, is there anything else that you need to know before we pull some college cards? Relax. Don't do it. Um, yeah. Four of Swords came out. Relax. Take it easy. You know, it's, um, telling you, you to focus more on your self-care. Focus more on doing things that bring you happiness, right? Focus more on doing, um, things that allow you to be more leisurely, you know? Like, if you have days off, take your fucking day off. I don't care if that means laying in the bed all day. If that brings you happiness, if that is, if, if rest is what you need to feel better, by all means, get that, right? If, um, but whatever the case is, it's really telling you to slow down, you know, to not make, um, extra stressors for yourself by, like, being so overly concerned in other people's um, outcomes, right? Like, that shit's gonna work itself out. With the Ace of Swords in reverse, it's really telling you, you don't need to take any action at this time. There's not, you know, it's just really saying, let the universe work this out. Um, with the King of Cups, I love this, because we have King and Queen of Cups feel that there is, uh, you're being called to focus on your relationship if you're in one, um, or this is, you know, saying that a relationship will be coming in for you to, you know, focus your time and your energy into, to really pour your cup into, um, you know, <laughs> you got this whole thing together and it's like, it's saying focus on that because that brings you actual peace and happiness, right? That's, um, something very tangible and within your realm of control, right? Because the more you focus on these other things, these um, redundant things, the more it puts a wedge in your connection. And it's really telling you, like, don't do that. Don't allow this to put a wedge in your connection. Don't allow this to um, steal your joy, you know? Focus on your love and be love. So, we're going to pull some Kali cards. See what Ma has to say about all this.
Chinamasta. In order to grow, the soul may need to separate itself from that which it once relied upon. Oppression will be overcome. Do not cling to what has been. Sometimes the best way to heal from the past is to cut it off completely and focus on inner regeneration and reorientation toward a more fulfilling future. You shall know true love and freedom. Yuka Shakti. We may yearn for circumstances to unfold according to our personal preferences, yet to trust in divine timing alleviates stress and fosters a more peaceful relationship with the universe. Even the right thing cannot attain fruition at the wrong time. A negative cycle is due to end and a new dawn shall arise. Dumabhati. Certain endings are unavoidable. They are necessary precursors to radical reinvention. Any disappointment, defeat, or loss in the negative repercussions of such experiences will not limit your future happiness, but are opening up yet unrecognized pathways for fulfillment. Your trust must be unconditional at this time, and later you shall see that everything has worked out for the absolute best. And that is what I have for you. Namaste. I love you guys, and I'll see you later.